Let's Take This Outside with Marianne Iveson, the podcast where she speaks to athletes, outdoor professionals, and scientists about why they connect with nature. Stephen Beerbrier is a community fitness and wellness Jedi. A government lawyer, father of three teens, and Brooks running ambassador, Stephen has carved out a whole lot of personal happiness over the last eight years by giving back to the Ottawa Gatineau community by creating free outdoor events and showcasing them on his Ottawa free fitness platforms. Though Stephen is most proud of his kids, his fourth child, the free fitness stuff, is definitely high up there. You can find him outdoors every month, helping lead groups like the Arboretum Hill Club and Sunrise Trails. In between all of this, Stephen can be found trail running in Gatineau Park and the NCC Greenbelt. Please welcome my pal, Stephen Beerbrier. Stephen Beerbrier. It's okay. So <laughs> the way you described to pronounce your last name was um, beer, like you're chugging a beer, and then Briar, like curling? Alcohol curling. You got That's it. Good combination. Uh, welcome to Let's Take This Outside. Well, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Like many of my other guests we met outside, we can't figure out exactly when because it's been so long. But I think it was pretty early in my Ottawa days, but I think we met on some kind of group hike or group outdoor activity. I know that happened. I just don't know where. I don't remember when. So I feel a little bad that we can't nail that down. It's okay, because I think that it is definitely Gatineau Park, and it was outside (laughs) in nature, and we were having a good time, and we were smiling. There's 100% chance of all of those things happening. Something I really wanted to talk with you about that you're such an expert on is community. And you are the go-to guy when it comes to bringing people together for free outdoor fitness. But let's go back where your passion for fitness and the outdoors started, which I don't even know what it is for you. That is a great question. And I should just preface this with the fact that this week, somebody called me the mayor of Ottawa free fitness. And I thought that was really funny. I don't know exactly where it's, (laughs) we'll just laugh about that for a while. I think that's cute. I don't know where it exactly started, but I know that it was one of those transition points, you know, in our chapters of our life. And I was doing outdoor activities, but it wasn't a lot of it. And I just decided that with the kids being at a certain age, that I could sort of prioritize myself again. And so I started doing cycling. I started doing walking, doing hiking. But then it started building from there, whether it was yoga, meditation, or ultimately, I do believe the stairs at the stadium, which kind of grabbed me. And it became less about a singular activity and more about the energy of the community together that actually really drove me. And it got me really, really excited, whether it was something as simple as a community hike or a community like, how are we going to crush these stairs or that hill? It it not only put a focus on the fact that I think this is singularly what I want to do, but also that I want to do it a lot and I want to share it with a lot of people. When you say the stairs, it's at uh, where the Ottawa Red Blacks play. So you're doing group stair running with a bunch of people and you're running up the stadium stairs. Is that I, I have, I've been in once. I lied. I've been okay. once. We have been really fortunate in Ottawa where there's all these different groups that have been able to put on these types of things. And so, yes, it's imagine just a big stadium and where there's a pile of stairs and somebody says, go. And then you're running up and down the stairs and then you're kind of moving from one one staircase to the next staircase. And so for a period of time, probably like 2017 until 2020, twice a week, there was an opportunity where two different groups were putting it on. I became a coach of Sunday stairs and I just couldn't get over how transformative it was for people who are coming into it cold. There were triathletes and there were those people that you're like, wow, that's an athlete. But there were the people that were coming out from the place of, I haven't moved since high school, like when it was mandatory. And they were coming into it with that cautious look, like sort of like the wallflower at the high school dance. But then they were just like their eyes popped open and they were like, wow, not only is this, it's hard. Yes, but I am having fun and I'm being supported in this in a way that I have never in my life felt. And I already want to come back. Like you could see it in their eyes. And that just makes my heart grow every single time. When was the transition from showing up at these things to being a leader or taking over, creating your own? Like, When did that transition over? 
Wow. Okay. So I go into all of my Friday workouts and we'll talk about that later, but I go into all my Friday workouts saying everyone's a leader. They just might not have had the opportunity yet. And so I feel like I've ultimately always been a leader. I just didn't know it. Like nobody gave me the leader baseball cap and said, now you're a leader because I was already doing it. I was already the raw, raw guy and I just didn't have that classification. And I don't think you actually need that classification. And I think that that's the wonderful part of all this is the fact that we live in a world where we're boxed in pretty quickly, like from high school onwards. And this is what you are. You're a jock or you're a scientist or whatever you are. And under the heading of fitness and wellness, everybody is a leader. And so you really just got to find your passion and just show it off. And so that's what I was doing. That's what I think I'm doing. That's what I think I was doing is just transitioning into this place of like not feeling uncomfortable about it and just being really excited about showing off what I'm doing and to say, you know, stairs might not be for everybody. Hills might not be for everybody. You know it as well as I do. Hiking might not be for everybody, but let's at least show it off. And we probably will have gained people who get to do it. And then you just see how their fitness and wellness, how their happiness grows. When you say everyone is a leader in fitness, what do you mean by that? A good friend of mine said, getting into fitness is really easy. It takes two steps. You put on the left shoe and you put on the right shoe and then you go out the door. And that's it. Like all the other stuff that exists in the fitness and wellness industry that tells you, you know, you have to be able to do this and do this many reps and all that. I think it's great. But I think what we're really looking at from the perspective of fitness and wellness is we want to be happy. And so fitness and wellness and happiness go hand in hand. If we just do something as simple as go outdoors, which conveniently is your podcast. Weird how that <laughs> totally aligns. Totally weird. So it's less about looking at social media and it telling you what fitness and wellness is and more about just doing things that make you happy and make you feel good. And a lot of it has to do with getting outdoors. And so when I'm able to promote and showcase these amazing people and these amazing events and these amazing things that go on regularly that are free and that are outdoors and people then start connecting with it and going to it, it's like a spider web. Those people produce that positive energy and they showcase it to others and they showcase it to others. And I really do feel like this is the starting point for happiness and wellness in the world because it takes out that one excuse that everybody has, which is, if I want to be happy, it's going to cost me money. And that's, to me, not true at all, because it doesn't require a dime, because you don't need to buy the best shoes, and you don't need to buy the best cool like gear. You just need to get outdoors, and you need to go for a walk for 10 minutes and start that point. One of my projects is a happiness project called Happiness Habit 613, and it's really about these nine pillars of happiness are right there all the time with you, and they don't cost a dime. It's about going outside and moving. It's about taking a minute every day to yourself and being mindful. It's about going outside in nature. All these things that are at our disposal, and sometimes we kind of get lost in the busyness of our lives, and we don't take that step back to just appreciate it and do it. Can I be a little bit, I guess, open about a little my own journey from the past year and what you were saying and how much it resonates? Yeah. And I'm sure if people listen to the podcast, they might know. So, so last year was like probably the toughest year of my life. And this year has been completely about stripping away all the BS, stripping away a lot of like, I'm a competitive person, so you can't strip that all away. But, you know, not focusing on times, not focusing on any of that stuff and just focusing on, okay, like this morning I woke up, I'm like not feeling good mentally. I'm going to go for a bike ride. And my only goal was just get outside and go for a bike ride. Like I might do some races, but none of that matters anymore. All I'm like focusing on now is like getting outside, moving my body, because I know like one plus two equals three. Like I just know that factually. You get outside, you move your body. It's great for your mental and physical well-being, right? So to hear you say this, you know, I think it strikes chord with anyone who struggled with anything, especially the last couple of years, right? Anyone who's struggled in any way, shape or form. And I think we make it so complicated. And I think stripping it all down, being like, oh no, it can be this simple. Totally. It goes down to basic building blocks. And where we've come from, like where we come from as a, as human, right? I regularly talk to people about something as simple as nutrition, but I take away all of the, the complexity of it. And I just start from the place of, are you drinking enough water? 
Like, what's your water intake on a daily basis? Oh, there she is. She's drink. You can't see it, but she's drinking water. Right and there's now. some lemon. <laughs> but it, it's something that is necessary for us to exist, but something that we don't take even a few minutes to think about on a daily basis that we need we need to hydrate, right? And something as simple as that actually can equate into happiness because as we add the building blocks, if we hydrate properly every day, if we get enough sleep every day, if we move, and we're not talking about like, and I, I don't know why I always use spin class as the example, but you don't have to do a, like four spin classes a day to equal movement, right? You can do that bike ride that you did today and that made you feel good. It could be that walk around the block, like dogs are really helpful for that, right? Like they force you to go out and do some movement. And if you could do some of these things outdoors and near your local park, near your local little forest and get out with nature. And, you know, I'm a tree hugger, so I literally hug trees. I connect with nature in that way. It changes my mood. It changes my day and it's transformative. And I know that it's transformative for others because they've come up to me and they've said, Oh my goodness. I used to do like, you know, eight hour hikes because that's what I was told to do. And then I went on one of your mindfulness hikes, which is like an hour. And it's like, if we hit like two kilometers in the hour, it's shocking because we're doing all these stops along the way and we're actually mindful and we're connecting with nature and we're connecting with ourselves. And then people come out of these mindfulness hikes and they're like, well, one, they're free. So they're, everyone's like, Hey, that's great. But two, they're like, what kind of like Jedi magic did you just do on me? Because like the bricks have lifted off my shoulder and I feel so much more human again. So there's two streams that I definitely want to touch on here. Uh, and one of them that's come up a lot in this podcast is like accessibility for people to get outside. Because I think that's one of the biggest problems is people don't know where to start. And I think these free gatherings and these free community events are, I think they are a pillar for people to be encouraged to get outside. Hiking can be super intimidating, can be very intimidating on your own, or you don't know where to start. So I would love to talk about the accessibility and how you've noticed the community, I guess, latching onto and joining onto when it comes to just removing some barriers for a lot of people. Accessibility is a huge issue. And it's something that we have to be very conscious of when we are creating our events, whether they're free or not, because one of the challenges is How do you get people to get moving if you want to make it really available? And one of the challenges that I've been working with is just something as simple as geography. So it's great that there are free and maybe not so free events that are put on by amazing people. But if you can't get the people to it, how is that going to help everyone? So a lot of our events that we've done over the last couple of years have been like trying to pinpoint Number one, is it something that can be accessible by public transportation? Is it a timing issue? So we've moved our scheduling around a few times, and then we start reaching out to the community, different pockets of the community, and we ask the the basic question, like, is this working for you? And like, we've we've had some conversations about Sundays, for example. Like, I, I think Sunday mornings are amazing as an opportunity to do things. And then some people come back and they've said, well, it doesn't work for me because of church. And I've been like, oh, wow, totally. Like, mark that down and let's start working on that and start building programming that could be made available more broadly on a day where we think it's pretty open to do so. So it's sort of like this, like, science, (laughs) sort of like this time science that I've been working on on the side, which is to try and find how to maximize not just the repeat participants, because that's great. Like, I mean, those people have consumed the Stephen Kool-Aid and I love having them there. And I know that they, just like I said earlier, from a spider web perspective, they're going out and they're showcasing this as well. But it's for the people that I haven't seen yet and from different geographies and from different economic backgrounds and from different worlds, even if it's like two blocks away from my home, it's a different world. And so as an example, about two years ago, we started a community hike specifically for the BIPOC community. And we knew at the beginning that when we started it, that we wanted it to be led by Black, Indigenous, people of color community, by them, for them. But at the beginning, it was just not going to happen. So I was part of the leadership that did that. That's where I, one of the examples where I, I, I would always be checking in with different groups within the Ottawa Gatineau community and saying, like, how do we get more people out? And the more time that has passed, the more we were able to sort of fine tune the recipe 
And as a result of that, like number one, it's to me been a huge success. And number two, we found people within the BIPOC community who have jumped at the opportunity to lead. And so like from my perspective, all I do now is post the events. Like I check in with the leaders and I'm like, let me put it on my social. So it has a broader scope and accessibility and you know, away you go. And I just did one today and I'm just so excited because it's the ownership, right? Sometimes it's about ownership and it's not just leadership, but the feeling like it's yours and you're doing it your way. And that makes a huge difference in terms of the way that you can showcase it. Let's take this outside with Marianne Iveson. What do you think was and is lacking and not just Ottawa, I'm just thinking of like the outdoor community that is that is badly needed when it comes to making things more accessible? Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Let me think about that. It's, it's like, it's like, it's like, how do you cure everything, Stephen? Question. Um, Aren't you a lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> there, there's so many pieces to the puzzle. And so it's all about just each organization, each group that's planning it out, trying to come up with ways that make things more available. For example, we could talk about geography. We could talk about the time of day. We could talk about transportation. We could talk about gear. And gear is a really good one because in yours and my world, there's now gear libraries that didn't exist like three years ago. Or if they did, they weren't very public about it that make gear, outdoor gear available to anyone and everyone for basically however long they need it. Like whether it's for camping, for Nordic skiing, or for skating, or for, it's quite amazing to see these people that are giving of their time to make the outdoors more accessible for people. Now that I'm done drilling you with questions that are uh, (laughs) bigger than... Bigger, bigger than all of us. Uh, but I'm so glad. Thank you so much for at least trying to have that conversation with me. I appreciate your, your input, especially because you, what did you say, the mayor of outdoor fitness? Something like that. And, I, and, and it's not on my business card yet or on LinkedIn, but it will be. Strong. Got it. Yeah. Let's switch gears to the connection specifically with nature. And how do you see people maybe change their minds about like, oh, maybe I do like exercising outside. Have you seen any of that? And like, what is it about nature specifically that makes people keep coming back for more? I think the starting point is to show them that maybe their vision of nature is not quite what nature is, if that makes any sense. Because even in our mindfulness hikes, we'll do like a full minute of silence in nature. And I know that you and I have been on hikes where it's just kind of like, go, go, go. And if you're not go, 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 you're fueling, 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 hydrating, hydrating. It's like a little, uh, a little dance, a little hiking dance that everyone does. And then you get to the end and you're all like, wow, that was great. We did how many kilometers and we saw how many lookouts and we took how many great pictures of us jumping and, and looking cool. But that's one version of hiking in nature. And another version is actually connecting with nature. And I think that's the secret sauce. And it's not just that there's trees and that there's flora and fauna out there. It's that if the person that goes out, especially the first timer, and they get a minute of just silence and they're able to look and hear and smell and feel nature, they're locked in forever. I think you and I have had that experience. We just didn't notice it at the time because we already had this sort of foundational love of nature and then it's been building since then but for the first timer like the real first timer nature's just this totally foreign concept it sounds complicated like we go back to our earlier part of our conversation about complexity versus the building blocks to us nature is not complex but for the person who has never been out in nature it is so complicated including as you said Where do you go? How do you start? How do you do it safely? I don't even think about these things anymore. But I've been out on some hikes where people are like, yes, you know, this trail is very lovely, but like what time of day can I go out on it and I can feel safe? Then we have like bigger conversations about safety and nature and hiking and how to do it properly. And it's not like in the winter I want to be sitting at like a store indoors explaining all the things that you need for a hike. 
I want to actually be doing it while people are out there on the hikes and we can stop and we can have those conversations about where people are coming from. And so that, that's been my experience over the last couple of years is I'm not really tr trying to grow the expedition hiking community. There's enough of us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and it's like, I, I fit into that category too. How many of the 46ers of the Adirondacks can I do? Or like I, <laughs> we've already accepted the fact that we're in this really happy, like nature makes us happy. It's for the person who has never gone out and is very timid about it and can't even conceptualize the fact that an hour outside in nature will be not only transformative, but just generally will make them happy. I truly believe that. And there's this weird, I don't know if you want to call it a parallel, and I think both can exist, but you know, in the way you describe hearing the birds and smelling the trees and, you know, last week hiking with our mutual friend, Christy, and we were doing some scrambling in the Adirondacks, ironically, as you said that. And it was this like beautiful thing of like moving your body while also like grasping the rocks underneath your hands and like seeing in flora and fauna that I haven't seen in, you know, three years. I haven't seen it since 2019. So there is something absolutely like mindful and present and beautiful about that. Uh, and I love solo hiking or very small group hiking, but I also love and understand the community part of it too, because I think both can definitely exist and you can also enjoy both for what they are right? You can enjoy the like coming together with people and socializing and just hiking together and spending time together. But you're more likely to just really sit in the present when you are solo or with a very small group of people. But with your mindfulness hikes, I'm sure that those groups can get pretty big, but you still guide people in a certain way. Yeah. And what's really funny or, or funny for me, but uh, what I love seeing at some of our mindfulness hike experiences is, as an example, we'll do the one minute of silence and we'll have our eyes closed, you know, if people feel comfortable in that situation. And then at the end, we'll get a talking stick and we'll just open it up for people to share what they felt or what they heard. Everybody has a different experience, right? And it's so eye-opening, even though the eyes were closed. It's so eye-opening for the group because this shared group experience brings everyone together. And it also, at the same time, transforms the individual into realizing that there's so much more out there that they haven't yet experienced. What are some of the most common things that people say to you? Like, is it, oh, I didn't realize that nature smelled that way. Like what are some things that like come up over and over again that people notice that maybe you've forgotten about because you've been playing outside for so long? It's the senses. It's all the senses. It's the fact that I didn't realize nature sounded that way. I didn't realize the smells that I can experience in nature, which is like way different. Even though some of the events that we take place are within, let's say the city boundaries, there is ultimately a different smell in a forest. And we don't do this in the winter. I'm just letting everyone know in case they're signing up and they're like, I'm not doing that in the winter. But we'll, we'll have people take off their shoes and socks and have their feet in nature. And everyone always comes up and goes, I haven't touched the ground that way, either ever or in years. And it just, it felt so good. There's something about in the summer when you step outside with your bare feet and like the grass, like the fresh grass underneath your feet feels awesome. It like brings you right back to childhood every single time. I was just going to say a lot of it does bring the participants back to their childhood experiences or for those that never had that child experiences, they feel like that's what childhood experience would feel like. And so they're experiencing it as adults. And that's to me where the smile comes from. That's where the I am hooked on this. And like I said, it does change the individual, which ultimately changes the person when they come home. And it builds on there to neighborhoods and communities as a whole. Like, it's amazing. So I know that you have all these clubs here in Ottawa, but I think there's a big part of my listeners that aren't even from here at all, which, I, you know, thank you for listening so much. But if you're talking to people from all over Canada or all over the world, how can they find these sort of groups or maybe start one of these groups in their own town or city or community? Well, number one, if you're in Ottawa, if you're coming to Ottawa, come to any of the things I'm talking about. They're all free. I welcome you. I'm, I'm the guy in the front that is smiling and is very loud. Um, 
<laughs> super easy to spot. You, 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 won't, every you time. won't be able to miss me for sure. But I mean, one of the things that I think about all of what I'm t- we're talking about today is that it's not cut and paste because you have to work with the geography and the, the population you're in. But all of these things can be replicated in some shape or form in any community. And that's what I would love to see, right? Like in pockets around the country, around the world, that suddenly you hear about these groups that are exploding with these great initiatives, which is just so simple, which is honestly, step one, get outdoors. Step two, do something outdoors. That's it. And I guess number step three, do it from a place of pureness of heart, right? Like, like (laughs) you're not trying to sell a product. I mean, if anything, you're selling wellness and, and happiness and that's what it's all about so for us like i mean 10 years ago i started doing all of these initiatives four years ago i got kind of super serious about it as always all of this is free corner of desk work but i got more serious about making sure that this was something that was really accessible and available to everybody and i would say step one is i said a few step ones here but one of the important <laughs> step 1.2 I used, I used to have a person that would always say rule number one. And I was like, you said rule number one, like 18 times there. But <laughs> one of the important features is, is consistency. And if you can say this is a weekly Saturday event at noon, then make it a weekly Saturday day event at noon. Even if for the first few times, 10 times, 20 times, you don't have the audience you're hoping to get because it really needs to build and it needs for people to know this is where it's at. This is where it's happening. And it's not just limited to the projects that I've been working on, but it's, I guess I've been sort of an overseer of other people's projects and other fitness and wellness efforts. And the ones that I see that have the most success involve consistency. Actually, this is very uh, inside on podcasting, but um, it takes an average of three years to build a podcast audience, and it's about consistency. <laughs> so I totally, yeah. and but that also applies to you know eating well and being healthy yeah. and building your engine to be a better runner or like you know I, consistency. It applies to everything, including of course this and building a community, right? And getting people to show up and having something to look forward to. Yeah, absolutely. And like you know, just going back talking about healthy habits. I mean, we're talking about our life force, right? Like we want our life to be as rich and rewarding, not from the financial richness, but from the life riches for as long as possible, right? We want functional movement into our 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s. And the formula is there. It's just a question of making the commitment to doing it. And a lot of the commitments are building those healthy habits. From a nutrition perspective, it's always talked about 21 to 28 days. You know, you're starting to build like, and I'm talking about healthy habits, not like I'm not eating 28 days. I'm talking about like building the proper nutrition plan, building the water plan. Like when I'm talking about hydration, it's all well and good to put that two one liter bottles next to you and say, I'm going to do it on day one. But can you keep it consistent? Can you do it like for, for the month? And once you do, your body starts regulating, the habits are there and away you go. Same with sleep. I notice when I've had bad night sleeps and how that impacts on me for the rest of the day, for the rest of the week. And it's really important to start building those consistent, healthy habits of one minute of mindfulness a day. I don't push gratitude journals because I find that those tend to overtake oneself. Like, you know, we have enough going on in our world, right? That we add this thing that's supposed to be positive that suddenly (laughs) takes over our world in a negative way. But what I do promote is the idea of like, once a day, scribble a paper, like you're doing something fun, scratch that word down, like you went out for a walk and just put it in a gratitude jar. It doesn't have to be every day you put it, but something that you can go back to. And on the less good days that it will exist, to be able to go back and, and to see all the things that you are grateful for. I mean, every day when I do anything, I start my day with the fact that I'm grateful that I'm breathing. Like, and I know it sounds so corny. It's like, oh no, it's Stephen the Yogi coming out. But it's so true because we have a finite number of breaths in this life force. And it's such a gift. It is such a gift. And to sit there and I know there's the well, mental wellness component. And I'm not like, that's, that's a separate category. Like when we do our happiness project, 
we start off by the fact that these nine pillars of happiness will transform you. But if you already have pre-existing conditions, that's out of this sphere. Like you need a professional, you need to have that contact. But I'm talking about for on average, these healthy habits, including getting outdoors, it changes your day. It changes your life and it can change other people's lives as a result of it. So I just get too excited about this stuff because it's such a simple process, right? But you have to take, again, left foot and right foot and out the door and start. I have to ask, where do you get the energy to do everything? Because you are a lawyer, a dad, a community leader. Like, obviously, you know, you're, you're outside a lot and you're getting that. Like, what, where do you get the energy to do this? Is it as bright and shiny as it looks? Or is it some days you just... Well, I mean, I said like there, there's days that are less good, right? And there's negative forces that are around all of us all the time, but it's how you work with it. And so I'm not that loud <laughs> at the beginning of a workout as I am all day long, but I guess it's because I've made choices. We can all make choices, right? And so I have chosen that I would like to live a life that is filled with positivity, that is filled with goodness and wellness and happiness. And because I've already found what I believe to be the not secret formula that I'm sharing with everybody for a low, low price of zero dollars, that's how I, I live my life. And so like there are moments and days where I sit there and go, yes, I've been outdoors and I've been doing all the fun things I like to do. And then I come back and I'm sort of showcasing those things on social because, you know, how else do you get the message out these days? But in between those things, I'm resting, I'm getting my sleep, I am happy. I guess there's moments when I, I'm just filled with so much happiness from the community. We like At the end of any of our events, we'll end up going out for hydration and fuel afterwards, whatever you want to call that. And we're all just sitting around and we're all just chatting. And the spirit and the energy is like through the roof. It's 101 out of 100. And I come out of that and it's like, it's my fuel. It's, it's literally my fuel. I come out of it and people that are around me after it are like, oh dear, you can already feel his, like the wheels are in motion and he's coming up with a new idea, <laughs> which is going to take more time out of like, you know, the limited 24 hours a day. People ask me if I, if I found more than 24 hours a day and it's like, no, but I just think of these ideas and I'm like, who else is going to implement them? At this stage. No, I'm serious. And, yeah, yeah. And, and, and if nobody's going to implement them, then I will. And hopefully some of the stuff that I do, people get really excited about and they're like, can I take that over? And I'll be like, yeah. In the same way that the BIPOC community hike, somebody came over and said, can I do it? And I was like, I started off with the, well, I guess. But in the background of my mind, I'm like, yeah, this is amazing. Yes, 100%. You have like multiple different clubs. Like there's one for running, the Mill Street Milers. You have Arboretum Hill Club, which is you just do hill stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, hell stuff. you have a lot going on is there like one spot where people can find all of your offerings yes the easiest way to do it is amongst all those things you just mentioned oh, i do a social called ottawa free fitness in which i try and take all the silos because there's all these great fitness and wellness activities that exist but they're not all in one place so i try and consolidate them all and make them easy for everybody to digest. So that's one way, and that's on Instagram and on Facebook. Or just follow me. I Usually I mention all the adventures that I'm doing along the way, and that you can find me on various socials, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or all that. And see how I really did a bad job of promoting myself? <laughs> well, like, good thing I have show notes. I'll tag you and everything. Oh, okay, Don't worry. We do what we cover all that. But like, I had all these questions written down and I, you know, I wanted to talk more about you, but like, you just talked about how much you love the community so much. I'm like, I'm just going to let them go. I'm going to let them rip on this. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a step-by-step -step guide of what recently happened that shows me that it's working because that that's important for me to see that it, like the formula actually works, which is, We've gotten a lot of new people that have come out to our, a bunch of our events. They've been all like kind of siloed themselves. They're like runners or they're hikers and they've just been doing their own thing and they've been okay with it. And then they found our groups. They've come out to our groups. They connected with our groups. And then just this past weekend, I was away out of town and I just watched on social as all these people like without my magic formula above them, just going out together. And they went for a hike. They went out for yes. a sunrise, 
birthday hike for one of the people that they didn't know three months ago. Yes. And huge win. The joy. So excited to see it. And they're all like, they're all writing me. And they're like, oh, we wish you could be here. And I kind of want to say to them, I'm really glad I wasn't there only because you guys just showed up and you did it yourself. And it's amazing. It's like letting, I was like ducks for, I don't know what a proper animal to use in this. Like, what do you, what do you release into the wild? I'm trying to think of an animal and I can't think of something. We'll just go with great humans, realizing their potential and realizing that, you know, let's say the hiker is now learning about the runner and the runner is now learning about the cyclist and the stand up paddleboarder. And they're all learning that there's a lot more out there in terms of the outdoors, but they're also learning a lot about themselves as well as they're just growing. And it's just awesome. You're a proud fitness papa, I have to say. I'm proud. As the mayor of free fitness, I am, I am, I'm proud and I'm glad that I, I, I think I've been reelected for this year. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. Yeah. The mayor of free fitness. Thank you, Stephen Beerbrier, for joining me on Let's Take This Outside and uh, chatting about community. This has been fantastic. This was awesome. I will come back anytime you want. Thanks for listening. For more, let's take this outside. Go to ivisonvoice.com slash podcast. Produced and distributed by the Sound Off Media Company.